Hello viewers. Welcome again to our Vashio transmissions of our lessons. In our lesson today, we are going to focus on tone. And we are going to focus on tone in English paper 2. As you are aware, when tone is tested in English paper 2, it will be tested in question 1, that is comprehension. It may be tested in question 2, that is the extract. It may be tested in question 3, that is poetry. So we are talking of around 9 marks out of the possible 80 marks in English paper 2. And that is why we cannot afford to ignore this particular concept at, as it is used. So, use of tone in comprehension, the extract, and poetry. The framing of the question is normally uh, the same. And we want to look at the definition of tone. Very simple way of looking at tone. In paper one, when we talk about tone, we have it in tone of variation. Basically, tone is the way we talk, period. So whenever you see this word, tone, what should come into your mind is the way we talk. The way we talk is what we call expression. The way we express ourselves. So tone, that one is the way one can express their feelings. Yesterday, we were talking about attitude, the way we feel about something. The way we communicate our feelings is now tone. That is communicating. Communicating our feelings. In a poem, there will be expression of emotions. How do we capture that? In a comprehension, the author has his own feelings towards the subject that he is describing. How do we communicate that? In an extract, we have characters that are communicating. We have the author that is passing his message. How is that one done? Number three, we are going to look at this one as the medium of communication. As the media of communication. Definition was number A. Number B, tone, once again, just like attitude, is communicated through the use of adjectives. <coughs> this one is done through adjectives.
what is coming to our attention is adjectives will be a very important class of words when it comes to English paper 2. When you are describing attitude, when you are describing tone, when you are describing mood, when you are looking at character trait, all that will require the use of adjectives. And having looked at that, we can ask ourselves, directly go to commonly used adjectives to describe tone. Common adjectives in describing in describing tone number A Sarcastic, ironic tone, and we can add satirical. Commonly used words we have sarcastic, we have ironic, we have satirical. Three adjectives that can be used to describe tone. Sarcasm, it is intended to hurt. Sarcasm is intended to hurt. E.g. You are such a brilliant child. To attain grade D. Look at that statement. You come home armed with your report form. You give the report form to your parent. The parent looks at the report form. English, D. Kiswahili, D. Maths, D. Chemistry, D. And then says, boy, you are very brilliant to attain grade D. The way he communicates this kind of sarcasm is sarcastic. It is intended to hurt you. He talks the opposite of what he means in such a way that he is expressing his sarcasm. So when you have such a statement and then you are asked, how do you communicate that one? So you are going to communicate in a sarcastic tone. When Oloisidoli visits Menik to go at demand either Russian or Thai. He says these words. And I quote him on page 282, paragraph 4. 
How are you, madam? He greeted Minik as he walked towards her, his hands outstretched. We didn't know you were holding a party. That one is being sarcastic. One, he refers to Menik as madam. Then he is stretching out his hand to say hi to her. But deep inside him, he has a lot of contempt, a lot of hatred. So these words are supposed to be delivered in a sarcastic tone because that is not what he means. That is our instance number two. When we come to satirical tone, our poem our extract must have what we call satire. And satire is where you are mocking the behavior of a character. You are mocking such behavior as greed. You are mocking such behavior as foolishness of a character. And that is where satire will come out. We describe a character in such a way that we are laughing at that character. I want you to look at the character of a hyena in all the narratives that we get. The hyena is invited for a party at two different places at the same time. And when the time comes, the hyena is in a dilemma. Do I go to Karyoko? Do I go to Huruma, where I have been invited? Suppose I go to Huruma, and then I meet the guys have taken food. No. Let me go to Karyoko. No. Let me go to Huruma until the hyena decides I will go to the two places at the same time. Look at that animal. It decides to take the path, the two paths at the same time. And what happens? It is split into two. When you are narrating that kind of a story, you are going to use satirical tone because you want to bring out the foolishness of that character. Number B. Another commonly used uh, tone. Pompous. This is when one talks in pride. This one expresses pride. If a comprehension has something to do with pride, then you are going to talk in a pompous, 
if an extract has a part that has pride, then you are going to talk in a pompous tone. Pampas is another word for pride. I want to take you to page 283. Page 283. Paragraph 3. Oloisidori is further talking to Minik that assertive woman and Orisidori says who are you to talk to me like that he bellowed trembling with fury do you know Orisidori Lankia that, that, that pride do you know Orisidori Lankia I don't need your permission to pick a wife, do I? Who are you, by the way? In other words, Oloisiduri wants to project himself as a very important person compared to Minik. And as a character, when you are reading those words, you are going to read them in a pompous tone, a tone that expresses pride. A day-to-day -day example, once again, would be if you are talking about achievements. It is at the end of the year. The Minister for Education has announced your results. And then you are walking home armed with all is. And when you get home, you tell your father, Daddy, you know what? I am a grade A student. When you are talking those words, the tone will be pompous. Number C. Another commonly used word is nostalgic tone. Nostalgic. Good memories. When you are reading an extract, you are reading a comprehension, you are reading a poem, and then that poem is about good memories. Memories are made of this. You want to go back in time because then it was very good. In that case, you are going to use nostalgic tone. A good example can be captured on page 44 by Tayo. Tayo, we know, was an achiever in music. When she was in school, she was a celebrated heroine in music and dance. Every time there was music festival, she was the star until that time that she was noted by major broadcasting stations and uh, FM stations. And they even sponsored her to go for some extravaganza in Mombasa so that she can perfect her skills. On page 44, paragraph 3, 
Tayo was stupefied. She clapped until her heart's heart. And all along, she was lost in thought. This is where nostalgia comes in. She was lost in thought. The sight of those young school children singing and dancing so joyfully brought back the memories of her high school days. Her heart warmed up when she recalled the numerous occasions when she excelled in music festivals and was awarded and galladed. Broadcasting stations recognized her talent and encouraged her to take music as a career. So when you are reading these words, you are going to apply nostalgic tone because it's about the good things that happened a long time ago. Number D. Sympathetic tone. When we talk about sympathetic tone, it is that piece you are reading that elicits pity. That piece you are reading, and after reading that piece, you feel piteous. You are sympathetic towards that scenario. It affects you in a negative way. And nothing can describe that. Nothing can describe that apart from a poem that I love called The Face of Hunger. Face of Hunger, stanza number two. I counted ribs, e.g., I counted ribs, bones were protruding. He cloaked with <coughs> glazed eyes. If I just use those three words, those three lines in that poem, it is called the face of hunger. I counted ribs. Bones were protruding. He looked with glazed eyes. This is a poem that is describing a very piteous image of a child that is affected by hunger. Child that is affected by hunger. Such that, one, this child is naked. The ravages of hunger has affected the child. 
until ribs are visible you can count one two three bones are protruding and the eyes are almost lifeless when you are saying such words you are going to employ sympathetic tone because you sympathize with the situation the tone will be pitiful the tone will be merciful and the tone can also be sad number next Number D, another commonly used adjective to describe tone is harsh. Harsh. Reprimanding. Harsh tone. That one you don't need uh, lot of explanation. I'm sorry to use this example. Look at the way our police officers talk. They have been trained to execute order. So whenever they talk to you, they talk in a harsh tone. So that you may understand the order that they are executing. When we talk about uh, harshness, there is this time, Ole Kaelo is preparing for the welcoming party. Andresian is in the house. She is Raging one, two, three things. And Orekaelo comes in. Remember the animosity, the unfriendliness nature, the cold nature that exists between him and Russian. And then this man comes and says, Would you ever do anything right, child? E.g. Would you do anything right? Asked Ole Kyle. So, such kind of an utterance is harsh. It is reprimanding. There is a lot of animosity in it. And when we are saying such words, the tone that we are going to use is a harsh, a reprimanding tone. Number E. Accusatory. Accusatory tone. The word accusatory comes from the word accuse. If you are reading a piece, be it a comprehension or an extract and a character is accusing another you are leveling certain accusations then the tone that you use there is accusatory page 
282 of the blossoms of the savannah. The last paragraph of page 282. Once again, it is the encounter between Oroisidori and Minik. When I selected this passage, it is because it captures almost every other tone that we may need. The last paragraph says of page 282. Since you seem to be rash with me, Oloisidori said in a fit of pique, embarrassed by the way Minik rudely addressed him. I will come straight to the point. Now, listen to the accusation. I am told you are keeping two of Olekaero's daughters here. I am told you are keeping two of the Olekaero's daughters here. <laughs> For your information, I have a choice to marry any one of the two. Choose the one you want to keep, for I have come to take one of them. I have already paid Dari enough to cover the two. The part that I am interested in here is I am told you are keeping two of Ole Kairos daughters. Ole Sidori is accusing Minik of uh, keeping Russian and Tayo. And Oroisidori believes that the two are his uh, brides. Leveling accusations page two eight two. Number F. <clears throat> Cautionary. And in this case, the word cautionary comes from the word caution. This is to warning. Sometimes uh, advising Nothing gives us this tone than we have it in the pearl. Page 59. Page 79. When Joanna is cautioning Kino, let us throw this thing away. Let us destroy it. Let us crush it between rocks. It is going to destroy us. It is going to ruin our child. When you are reading those words, you are cautioning. So you can be cautionary. At the same time, cautionary can go hard in hand with number G, pleading tone. You cannot caution without pleading. You cannot caution without pleading. 
Jonah is pleading with Kino. Let us throw away the pearl. This thing is evil. It is going to ruin us. There is caution in it and there is pleading in it that gives birth to number G, pleading tone. You are pleading with this person to do something. You are begging. You know, to plead is a begging. But note, the word begging is a verb. So we cannot use begging to describe tone. We use pleading, a pleading tone. Pleading can be uh, a verb. It can be an adjective. Pleading tone, when it is used to qualify the word tone. Number H. Celebratory. Celebratory. As the word suggests, this one is a tone that you use to indicate celebration. If there is celebration, It can be used for a joyous occasion. For a joyous occasion. A very good example of a celebratory tone can be captured on page 281. Two eight one. This is the song that is sung by the five hundred girls when they are holding a party to celebrate the uh, victory over oppressive traditions. Listen to this song. We are the blossoms of our Lord. We are the cream of our generation. We are the future of our nation. We are Itapoka e Ma. Where are those who used to doubt us? Where are those who thought we were not worthy? That for us to be worthy, we must be cut. Let them come out and see the daughters of Ma. We are proud to be in Toyene Mangarana. We are proud to be blossoms of the savannah. When you come to look for us, we shall not be there. We shall not be found in the DG dirty hearts. We shall be doctors. We shall stand side by side with men. We shall be building our nation together. We are blossoms of the savannah. Celebratory tone. I think that one is self-explanatory. If somebody is describing a celebration, an achievement, that is the kind of tone that they are going to use. Number I, threatening, threatening. When a character is talking in such a way that you are threatening. Nothing captures better this one than that incident when Tayo Adresian are attacked by a vagabond. 
These were his parting words. You have not yet seen the last of me. Even if we added there, you have not yet seen the last of me. There is a threatening tone. When you are reading those words, you are going to use a threatening tone. Number G, humorous. Humorous tone. You are reading a piece and then there is some humor coming out of it. Then the tone that you are going to use is humorous. <laughs> I want you to look at this situation. Oloisidori has come with his pride. He has come with a convoy of vehicles. He is there with his bouncers. And then he meets this woman. The woman is very firm. And Orisidori talks out. Do you know Orisidori? You know that kind of bragging and that one. But there is an incident when this man is attacked. Listen to this. Page 283 to 284. So there you can see the humor. 283. The last paragraph. The pandemonium that broke was unprecedented. Oloisidori must have adorated the loyalty of about 400 energetic workers who had just eaten to their field. As the girls retreated, the men surged forward. And in no time, Oroisidori's convoy was reduced to smoldering shells. That is humorous. And acrid smell of burning tires. But the humorous part is this. Oroisidori and his men had to run for dear life. I'm looking at the image of Oroisidori running away from a woman with all his pride, with all his riches, with all his position in society. This guy was running for his dear life. When you are reading such a passage, then you are going to employ a humorous tone. Dear candidates, the list cannot be exhausted. We have so many adjectives, but the major idea here is read that piece, understand the message, then you shall know which one you are going to apply, especially in poetry and an extract. Until we meet next time, it's goodbye for now.